Hello again. Um, I have this piece of tool steel here. Uh, it's 150 mils wide, it's 500 long and it's 5 mils thick. And I was thinking it would be really nice to uh, make one of um, the Egyptian swords called the Kopesh. So I saw some pictures on the internet, had a search around and I found a design um, that looks something like this. Um, so I've redrawn it here um, to fit my piece of steel, obviously the blade would be a lot longer. There are a lot of Kopeches that have a much shallower curve and on things like uh, Game of Thrones they have an Arak which is uh, more curved like a scythe. So in this one I would like to, if I can, have a brass layer in the handle and then some wood on top and maybe try and do something fancy on the pommel here and on here but I know in the past I've tried to do fancy things and then when it comes to it sometimes things can just defeat you but I'm going to give this a try um, cut this out and see where we get to so that's next step I've cut out the inside of the curve here. Well, it was a bit of a job, but uh, I got most of it out in one piece. It's not too bad, but as you can see, it's uh, really rough. To get around the corner here, I just kind of nibble little bits out, but I've got a lot of filing, um, but that's not too bad. The only thing is, I think I was a bit rough on the saw blade, because if you look along here, um, there's uh, bits of teeth missing. So either this saw blade wasn't as strong as normal, or I was being a bit rough. So either way, um, we'll carry on. Well, I've finished all the basic sawing. Behold the shards of Kopesh. Sorry I made that joke before. Um, as we can see here, it is really rough. Um, nothing a file can't sort out. Um, there's the basic, as you can see, um, here's the basic template. And I made the handle a slight bit longer. 
um, because I felt it was a bit short. I need to do some filing now. I have some files um, which I've been using to make my other swords. This is one of them. Uh, files come in three uh, cuts of uh, roughness. You have the smooth cut, you have the second cut and you have the bastard cut. This is the bastard cut which is the sharpest teeth you can get. But I was watching another video which said as the file gets bigger the teeth also get bigger. So I thought let's have a look and I found some 14 inch files they were the ones I could uh, afford and I came with these two monsters. So it's still a bastard cut it says on it here. They're Nicholson files but as you can see one's a monster. Uh, and I have a nice curved one and as you can see the teeth in that are sharp. So I'm hoping that um, shaping all this is going to be a lot easier with these two bad boys to help me. So I'm going to start doing that now. I've completed all the filing around the edge now. As you can see here. It was really easy with these two files. They've turned out to be really fantastic. Really, it was. Uh, I've never found filing uh, so quick and easy. I do have some shaping here to do. Um, it's not quite parallel in parts, so I'm going to parallel those two lines up, and then what I think I'll do is I'll try and bevel around here, this side and here, and just see how we go. Um, so I'm going to do that. Well, I've done a lot more filing. Um, I've done all the back around here um, and done around the top and all the way down to here. I haven't done anything on the tang yet because I want to put some layers of metal wood on there and I'm just thinking about that. Um, I've brought this bevel quite far back but I think what I'll do is I'll actually blend it um, like this because I think that would look nicer along here rather than the um, the way it's done at the moment so I'm going to keep on keep on filing and then start working on the handle I've cut out some pieces of copper this is 0.9 mil thick copper sheet and I've cut them out the same shape as the handle like so and I'm going to glue one on each side of the handle and then I'm going to file them to size and then I'm going to do something about a piece of wood on top so I'm going to do that. I've done a lot more sanding on the blade here as you can see uh, but the more I looked at it the more I realized um, it doesn't look very ancient so I'm going to use some vinegar and some hydrogen peroxide and give it an age finish and it will go better than with uh, the copper and the olive wood I have cut out here for the handle so let's try that So I've treated the blade here, um, if I hold it up 
you can see where it's gone black and brown and um, I've also put some furniture polish on there just to um, kind of seal it all in. I've got the copper glued on and I've masked off where I'll be putting glue to glue on the piece of wood so now I'm going to treat this with vinegar and salt and leave it in an atmosphere where there's ammonia fumes uh, to see if it'll turn blue. So let's go and do that. Well this is uh, the handle now. I've just taken it out from being in the ammonia mixture and here you can see the colours that the uh, salt and vinegar and the ammonia how they've reacted with the surface of the copper to make these nice blues and greens. So I'll have a go at this and see how strong this really is and we'll <coughs> see how it turns out. Well I've finally finished. Um, here it is. I've just glued the handle on. Um, you can see I'm just doing it outside because you can see the pattern on the blade better. So here's uh, it's olive, Italian olive. And uh, all the copper, you can see where the vinegar and the ammonia has reacted with the surface of the copper to make these nice colours. It does chip off in places but that all adds to it. Uh, the rust along here, where it was in with the ammonia, is just a, a much richer colour than the rust on the blade, so maybe that's what I'll do next time. Um, but I like the way it turned out. Um, I like the curves. Those new files I got made a much better job of it. So. There you go. Have a go at something, try out some new techniques, and surprise yourself with what you might be able to make. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that, and it'll encourage you, and thanks again for watching.